Hey nerds, welcome back. I'm Tyler. Today I'm going to show you how to diagnose and calibrate your gantry if it's not square to the chassis of your X-Tool P2. This is an official test and calibration procedure sent to me by X-Tool. I'll link that procedure in the description below if you want to check it out. Before we get into it, I want to mention it's not abnormal for a machine to be out of spec on arrival after shipping. As a matter of fact, my top of the line table saw, I had to spend hours calibrating. My miter saw, I had to spend time calibrating. Basically every tool in my shop, I had to spend time calibrating. So I don't blame X-Tool at all for this arriving and me needing to do some calibration. I would, however, be upset if it was impossible or hard, but lucky for us, this should be a pretty easy procedure. I'm sweating my freaking moobs off out here, so let's get into it. <laughs> you have man boobs. <laughs> I have two methods to tell if you need this calibration. The first one, you can tell just by eye, right here. Move the gantry all the way forward, and then move the laser module all the way to one side. You may want to test this on both sides. Make sure that your module doesn't go behind this lip over here. You want this to sit just in front. Now look here, the laser module is touching the front portion of this chassis here, and we have zero gap. As I move the module to the left, a gap forms, and it gets bigger and bigger as we go left. If we go back, you can see that the gap closes back up. So this is an indication that the gantry is off in tracking at a diagonal this way. So that's the first way, this is a visual component. This isn't the most scientific way to tell, the best way is to set up a test file. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I have my angle finder here set at 90 degrees. This is really cool. If you don't have one, I'll link it in the description. And here's my extended cutout from this cardboard. If I slide this baby over here, you'll notice we've got about an eighth inch gap over here on a 10 and a half inch piece of cardboard. This may not look like much on a small scale like this, but if I intend to use that conveyor system to cut out something really long, five feet for example, and I really do intend to use it for things like that. So yeah, maybe we got an eighth inch gap on this, but if I extrapolate that out, it's gonna be very noticeable. We might have an inch or more uh, being off square here, especially if I'm planning on some sort of precision that's going to give me some issues If you're just cutting out knickknacks and things like that, it probably won't matter much You probably won't notice a difference But for me and some of the things I intend to use my laser to cut out it absolutely is going to matter So let's go ahead and fix this up before we get started Make sure your machine is turned off and unplugged. You wouldn't want any happy little accidents. We don't we don't make mistakes We have happy accidents Lift open the lid, move your gantry forward, and then we're gonna remove some screws that'll allow us to get behind this access panel here. Okay, so to start, there are nine screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And they use a number eight star pattern bit to remove them. If you're not subscribed yet, and you like to see a sweaty man undo screws, now would be a great time to subscribe. And like and comment. Okay, all nine. All right, now this guy should come off. Yep. Nice, okay. Over here is the coupler, ah, see. This right here holds this piece to the motor. As you see when this moves, so does the coupler. So we're gonna undo these screws here. And these look like they use, do they use this? Yeah. Oof, they're in there tight. With these screws undone, what you can observe is the gantry now is flexible, so it'll move left to right and up and down without this, this shaft rotating, okay? So that allows us to get an angle on this if we need to. The X-Tool procedure says to move the gantry all the way forward and use the laser module to determine whether it's 
in the same line or not by sliding it from one side to the other and then tightening it. I don't really like that as much. I'm gonna go with a method that I saw online by a guy named Sam. His YouTube handle is SamCraft, but he uses these setup blocks. Now setup blocks are useful around the shop because they have the same dimensions and they're nice and square. So I'm gonna be using these as a stand-in for the front portion here of the chassis. So this should actually be, in my opinion, better than using the module as the module could be off. I don't know how square this is to the gantry. Uh, it's hard, it'd be really hard for me to tell. But I can use these to determine if the gantry is all the way forward because this will contact the gantry and not the laser module. So I have them in there. Let me get a better angle for you. Okay, so I have these right between the blades of the laser bed, and I'm going to move the gantry all the way forward so it comes in contact on both sides here, and I'm gonna push it from the back, and I can tell that this is making contact and this is making contact, therefore, this should be parallel to the face here. So now, I'm going to tighten down this coupler. Okay, I'm gonna use clamps. Forget that. So I'm gonna get my clamps in place here. I don't get to use these little baby clamps very often, so this is quite a treat. And we're using very light pressure here, just enough to hold them in place. Ooh, I got this little tiny baby clamp. You don't have one of these. I never thought I would be in a spot where I'd actually be able to use it. Ah, that's perfect, cool. Okay, so now that these are in place, let's tighten down this coupler here. It was very tight when I loosened it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, undo the clampies, move them off to the side, move this back a smidge, take out the setup blocks. If you guys need a pair, I will link the ones that I have in the description. Uh, I do like those, I don't use them that often, but they're nice to have for weird stuff like this. So now, now that we've done this, Let's move this from one side to the other. And we do get a little gap in the center, but it closes back up on the left side. So I think that this plastic might just be bowed a little bit. What we're gonna do now, I'm gonna button this baby back up and then we'll run our test files again to see if we get better results. Let's do it. Everything's tightened down. This is all put together. Now go ahead and just move things around to make sure that you're not binding anywhere. Everything seems to be moving freely and nice. Uh, I am going to also recalibrate. So I'm gonna recalibrate my mirrors and then we'll run our test file. I'm not gonna show you how to recalibrate if you wanna see that it's in my first video. If you're already using your P2 and you're in this spot here, you likely already know how as well. Okay, mirrors are all calibrated. So let's go ahead and run a test piece. Let's take a look at this and see how it measures up. Okay, and here is our previous piece again, just for reference, this is set at 90 degrees, and we can still see the gap over there. This is our new cutout piece, and the gap is gone, dude. Nice and tight, let's flip it over and look. No gap at all, uh, maybe a little tiny one. but that is so much better. Oh yeah. And here we go, we've got 90 degrees on the measuring device. And I don't know if you can see, but we are nice and flat there. And there's like maybe an ever so slight hair thin gap here at the top. But dude, that's, that's close, you, I, you know. I don't know how you can get closer than that. That's awesome. I'm really happy with that result. And that's it. Only took about 15 minutes and now we have a well calibrated machine ready for accurate cuts and engraving. 
If you're watching this video, collecting information on whether or not you should buy a P2 and you're looking for maybe like a quick recommendation, I do recommend it. I think that this is an awesome machine. I think it's great for beginners and it has plenty of power and features that you can really grow into it. If you're an expert level user, I don't see a downside either. It's very powerful. It's smaller than industrial sized machines while still allowing you with the conveyor system to cut ridiculously long material. And strange enough, I can't really think of a downside. Maybe the exhaust fan, I wish it would stay on just a little bit longer, but I bought an external fan to solve that. So if you are in the market and you're looking to buy a P2 and you wanna to contribute to my little dream here, there's an affiliate link in the description below where I'll get some kickback. It won't cost you anything extra, but I really appreciate that. And I pledge that 25% of all of my earnings from deals like this will go to debauchery and bad decisions and tequila. So rest assured that your contributions are going to a good cause. If you enjoyed the video and you wanna see more content like this, consider subscribing. I've got neat plans for lasers in the future. And if you wanna contribute beyond that, I have a Patreon where I plan on giving away laser files, SketchUp files, build plans, things like that for free to my Patreons. If you'd like to contribute to my debauchery beyond that, I have an option called Buy Me A Beer. That's where I cheers you at the end of a video, thanking you for your contributions to my little dream here. That's it for me though. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you in the next video.